Hey guys, how you guys doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Before we start though, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell so that way you know of every new video that I make. Today we're going to talk about DTOS. Yep, DT from DistroTube has taken his daily driver, compiled it into an ISO, and put it out on his GitHub for you to download and use it. And that's what we're going to look at today. As described, we're going to take a look at DTOS. And right now, I have it loaded up into my uh, virtual machine. I've given it uh, 10 gigs of RAM and six cores of my CPU. So it's got plenty of resources, more than what it'll probably need. And uh, we're going to go ahead and log in and see what it looks like. And this is what we're greeted with this is DTOS. Uh, it came with a different background. I actually changed it using his DM script of set BG for the setting of the background uh, into this is what I changed it to. Uh, what's really cool is it, well, let's just, he's got a lot of little cool things that he's put into it uh, right off the get-go for you. So it's pretty much so customized and set up pretty well. He has um, Qtile. Uh, installed as a, as the uh, window manager it's on here usually he's a ex monad guy but he actually did this one in qtile because he's gone to qtile to use it for a while he switches back and forth he says but either way it's a very good window manager it is uh, a window manager that is fully featured it's hackable tiling window manager and it's written in python so you can actually you know edit it and do things if you're familiar with python script uh, and the config file is actually written all in Python. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, it's also um, a Wayland compositor. So it is 100% workable on Wayland. Uh, you just have to uh, add some extra, uh, like, uh, PyWL roots or something like that. I can't remember what it's called for, for Wayland. But it, it'll it'll make it work. It's the Wayland roots compositor for Py, I guess. Uh, 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 config file. It can be made to work on Wayland if you decide to go full Wayland. Now, as you see, you're greeted here with this conky, and this information conky here on the side has lots of important stuff from the CPU usage to the RAM usage, which is right now at rest sitting at 722 megabytes out of the 10 gigs that you can see that I've given it. Uh, and then it's got some Qtile key bindings that are here for you, um, which S, if you notice, is his definition of super. Um, which would be the Windows key. Uh, and it's got the regular functions for the system functions, like you know, launching terminal, browser, run prompt, uh, all that good stuff is in this section. And then here is your Emacs version. And then here, uh, key bindings. And then here is your DM hub. Uh, Emacs is the actual text editor of choice. Uh, but he also does have vim and neovim installed as well and there are aliases that i could show you in the actual bash rc that are there speaking of the environments the shells he actually has three of them installed on here he has zsh bash and fish uh along with the starship prompt uh, so that being said you could choose whatever shell environment that it is that you want and over at the bar on the top here, as you can see, you have your workspaces environment here. Okay, this is his, his how you can click it to launch your, your terminal, right? To close out, it's the, the super, shift, and C to close out any window, or the focused window, actually. Uh, you focus to it, and then you close it. And then you have your desktop environments that are, you click on it, and you can go, or you're not your workspaces, and you can go to up to nine workspaces. Now, next to that is your one thing that, I'd like to point out about Qtile that is amazing. It is a very, very hackable and flexible. You could set up groups and you could set up layouts uh, for like your workspaces. You can do groups and you can do actual layouts 
styles where you can change the window to different views. And I'll demonstrate that here right now. Right now it's set for Monad Tall. Now let's go ahead and open up with uh, the Super and Enter key a couple of times. You see how it's in like the stacking format, right? It opens up your main window and then it stacks the other ones over here to the right. Well, if you click on it, you can go to max where it's just the one open window maximized, the focused window maximized. Then you've got just a singular stack. Then you got column. Then you've got tree tab, which is like tabs over here on the side that you can cycle through, as you can see. Then you can click on zoomy, which zooms a the one focus window, but then you can click over here on the next one. You can change it to that one being the zoom one. So it's almost like a reversed tabbed uh, format, but you're with the just being zoomed, the window being zoomed. Then you can switch back to the X monad tall, which is what we were. Now to close the windows, once again, shift, super shift C closes all the windows. And there's that. So that is how you can see and you and switch in between your layout for your different tiling uh, patterns that you'd like then over here on the right hand side of the bar here you have your actual cpu usage your memory usage your disk usage and then you have your volume which is interactable with your mouse key click on it to mute it you can actually use your center uh, scroll button to actually increase and lower the volume uh, also, you've got your keyboard and then you've got your time and date. And then you got your clipboard manager here. And then, of course, he's got, which is copy queue. And then you've got your actual PAMAC or your tray notifier for your package manager. And there are some updates that he needs to, that, that we need to download and install. He's also got Haskell installed because he does a lot of coding and stuff like that in Haskell. Uh, Neo Vim and Vim are, up, are needing to be updated. So that's a brief look at what needs to be updated. So now if you, when I set it up, uh, he, he uses PC man FM for his file manager. When I set it up, I did a, uh, key binding that I set up to launch the actual, uh, file manager, uh, because I like to do it as a keystroke. You know what I mean? It doesn't come that way out of the box right away. You had to put that in. So what you do is you, you over here, if you look at the conky over here, if you need to learn, uh, the super shift and then uh, return opens up your launcher, which is a, a D, D, D menu launcher uh, with DM scripts uh, in, put into place for it. So uh, you type in whatever it is that you want, PC, oops, man, F, there it is, and I hit that. And now that opens up your PC man FM. So that is how you can get to the file manager to begin with, should you install it. So to configure, as you can see, you've got your bash. We'll go to the bash RC first and take a look at it. And in the back, oh, that's the Emacs without the client. Let's open up the Emacs. So it's much cleaner. You don't get the bottom window there. So now if you look at it, and let's see if I do this full screen, which is the super and F key bindings makes it full screen. You can see that he has a whole lot um and more specifically i want to focus on the aliases this is where you want to go to to kind of get familiarized with i mean it's your bash script standard but this is where you can get familiarized with actual uh modes that you can set in there for like uh your pac-man and, and stuff and also getting mirrors colorizing output etc etc and with that let's look for vim and emacs Vim means Neo Vim and then whatever. And then EM stands for the, the Emacs. And then Emacs itself is for the Emacs client. So you would just type in Emacs uh, forward home you know, forward slash Alex forward slash whatever the dot config file is for um, like if you want to do the Pi config for uh, Utile to edit that and it'll open it right up. Um, also he's got LS is actually, he's got exit installed and you, it, LS is alias to using exa for the different color groups and stuff like that, which is awesome. It, it's a, it's a, it's actually one that I use as well. Uh, for Pac-Man, he's got, uh, the aliases for Pac-Man, uh, for pseudo Pac-Man SYU, which is update only uh, standard packages as he's got referenced right here. I love it when somebody who puts together a bash RC or a config file of any kind when they actually annotate stuff like this so that you know exactly what you're dealing with 
uh, instead of being left to guess at what some of the things are if you're not exactly super proficient in terminal um, syntax. Uh, so anyhow, so for like clean up and unlock is going to unlock the, the Pac-Man database lock. Uh, so you can uh, remove the lock on it and sometimes, you know, it gets corrupted or damaged and you run this command on it and it does that. Uh, cleaning up, also for cleaning up Pac-Man, uh, removing, you know, uh, orphan packages, and stuff like that. Uh, then you have um, premieres, like stuff that you can for update mirrorless for Pac-Man. Uh, colorizing, grep, you know, you've got grep, egrep, and fgrep that you can colorize too. And then he's also got standard, you know, uh, simplified copy and paste move um, terminologies. So, and then also he's got uh, adding flags for uh, human readable sizes and stuff like that. Uh, also, PS he's got he's got aliases for PS merge or uh, X sources too as well. Git. So because he maintains his repo, uh, he's got obviously all the Git aliases in here that you're going to need to do that kind of stuff. Um, also, he's got the Git error messages from the G Journal CTL, um, GPG check, uh, audio files for Play Wave. He uses Dead Beef as his actual uh, um, music player. Uh, then for his uh, video players and movie players, he uses VLC. Uh, then he's got the YouTube downloader. Uh, then he's got between to switch between shells, which is this is key to note: is you type in whatever shell it is you want to, but you say two. So like two bash, two zsh, and two fish. Uh, also, uh, for the config, you have um, the config, which will do your uh, dot files to work. You know, work tree and home. Uh, term bin. You know, he's got a lot of different aliases in here. Uh, DTOS copy, DTOS backup, which will copy uh, specific directories and files into specific direction files with the date and time output. Uh, and then he's got color script and also bash stuff. And then uh, under setting the Starship D prompt, he says it right here for, you know, on your bash init. So that's a look at his bash RC, which is very complete and very thorough, uh, which is nice. Uh, let's uh, make this small. We're going to close out of that. Okay, so then we're going to take a look at the next one that you want to definitely look at to get familiarized with stuff is you're going to go into your Qtile and you're going to go right here to this config.py. Uh, and you're gonna we're gonna go ahead and open that up in the email client or e Emacs client, and then we're gonna take make this full screen, and then so as you can see, it is definitely uh, configured with 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 Python. Uh, and what's nice is uh, understanding a little bit. Uh, you can import colors, so there's a colors PI, there's a OSPI subprocess PI uh, that you can uh, import colors. Where if uh, I believe, let's make this. So if you open up colors pi this is where you could set up like your different themes that you're that you color themes that you use throughout your um like bar and your actual windows borders and that and you specify it to the thing so this would be where you would have all your um uh colors that are specified here and so that's what he's talking about importing colors is importing that colors pi Wherever you put colors and you put color the color number or whatever, it will actually pull those colors. Uh, so anyhow, there's that. Uh, then the next section, you you have what's known as uh, a uh, layouts, which are for like lazy layouts and stuff like that uh, that are known in Qtile. If you go to the Qtile dot yeah uh, docs dot org. Uh, and look under the documentation, you'll find the different layouts and the different things that you, groups that you can set up there and how to set them and stuff like that. They also give you great examples on how to actually uh, configure them in the config file, how the, the you're supposed to. Like, um, perfect example, like a lazy, uh, you have a lazy command as well, uh, which is going to be like mod R, then you see I got this spawn right here next to my workspaces. So if I want to type uh, Brave, well, and I hit Enter, it should launch Brave Browser, and it launches Brave Browser, just like that. So that is a way to do it. Oh, also, by the way, he's got Brave Browser installed as a default browser. Now, if you look at the very top here, um, where, where, ooh, sorry, right under my colors right here, 
it's got where you allows um the at lazy layout function as well uh for like mod four is your mod key the terminal that he's got for his my term is my alacrity browser is brave email client for emacs is that and then file manager this is the one that i made which is my file manager being pc man fm and then i gave it key bindings uh down below uh to launch that which is right here the second line right here as you can see i added this to make it launch pc man fm if i hit the shift the mod shift f key and it opens up pc man fm that was not part of it i did that in, in configuring it to set it up so anyhow just give give this um configuration file a, a peruse so that you can actually uh figure out what some stuff is how he's adjusted like uh to grow the window uh is uh the plus and minus which is going to be the plus uh equal and minus so equal makes it bigger minus makes it smaller that makes sense minus meaning take away and equal has the plus sign above it so i'm assuming that's why he he did the plus and might be to be more plus and minus than equal but without being shift it wouldn't be you know plus uh anyhow so there's that um just little things like that are in here that, that are awesome but one of the coolest things that i really want to um actually show is the the dm scripts that are here with the dm hub uh and what's cool about qtile and what makes qtile so versatile is that it actually has key cord and by that a key cord is where you can actually hit two keys to get into a function and then you hit a third binding key that will actually perform what it is that you have assigned to that key cord function so if you look for dm hub right here this is the one that you want to remember if you can't remember these other ones so for like dm hub you hit the 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 key cord which is going to be the super p and then say i want to do like uh set the background you would hit b and it's going to open this up and you want to hit random like you want to hit set hit set and it'll take you to this where you can pick a background and i believe if you hit m it makes it set I, as you can see i just changed it uh it it actually marks it is what it does is it sets it marks it and it does that again so once again let's go ahead and do the key chords again and change our background to something else so we're going to hit the super p and then b for background we're going to hit set and then you're going to pick one anyone from here that you want like uh, let's pick uh let's see if i can find the original that came with it which is more towards the bottom or when it first installed out of the now let's pick this beautiful flag. he's actually got a lot of nice backgrounds already installed here it's pretty cool and it did see that that's how you mark it to set it just like that now another cool thing is they have uh the dm hub if you do the actual super p and then h pulls up your hub now this is all the dm scripts that are installed you can download these from his uh repo and you can actually install it into your actual arch based distribution uh that this is based off of so it's based off of arch so like dm lights a tool for managing your backlights uh, it literally tells you what all of it is uh d man for uh searching for man page for a random one uh music play uh on mpd or mpc uh then also you got your pipe wire out switcher then the dm radio this is a really cool one uh and with this one like you can do different online radio stations you can go to so like you can go to oldies pop stars radio metal ra rock and roll radio 2000 uh, limited 80s and so let's go ahead and uh i'm almost afraid to play one because i don't want to get demonetized but let's hit classical music classical and hang on one second as you can see it's playing right now and so i just i just turned it off right now i just muted it because i don't want to do it so now to stop it from playing you hit your key chord and I'm doing the R, the radio one, and I just hit quit. And now I can unmute it, and there's no music. 
and Dunst is your notifications right here. What what is happening? Anyhow, that is kind of a, a brief look at uh, DTOS. Uh, <laughs> coming from DT, it's very cool. It's very well put together. It's got all the tools that you need to be a power user. This is definitely not meant for new users. Um, it can be used by new users if you're willing to put the time in and learn some shortcuts and learn how to be a, uh, uh, a proficient window manager. Also, if you want to make changes to it, you're going to have to be proficient in coding in uh, Python, which... I'm not a great Python coder in any way, shape, or form, but I figured it out to add the actual, uh, you know, the file manager key bindings. And stuff. Uh, as far as doing your screens and stuff like that, there's also documentation you refer to. Makes it quite easy. But as I said, it can be done. It can be used. And it is well put together. Uh, give it a try. Go to his GitLab. Uh, put, pull it down. Or GitHub, sorry. I keep saying GitLab. I don't know why. Go to his GitHub. Pull it down. Download the, the, the ISO, install it, give it a try. Tell me guys what you think. I think it's well done. DT, great job, brother. I hope I did this justice. I just kind of did a quick overview of it, but either way, fantastic, fantastic work done. I will tell you what I always tell you. Keep doing what you do. Keep on Linuxing. Stay blessed. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the very next video.